In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, where hope is a rare commodity, the Order of the Sacred Rose shines as a beacon of unwavering faith and valour. Established during one of the Imperium's most terrible periods, this illustrious Order of the Adeptus Sororitas has become a symbol of purity, courage and divine purpose. Welcome to today's Warhammer Wednesday. If you haven't guessed it, we are painting some Sisters of Battle and we are going to focus on the Order of the Sacred Rose, which is an all-white power armour. Hopefully I can do a good job. We are speed painting and we're going to mostly be using the army speed paints. So I start off with a black prime, heavily dried brushed it with the good old uh, pallid witch flesh paint like I always do. And then we're going to go into the army speed paint, holy white. I'm going to read over this video with some lore background on this faction. And if I miss any pots of paint, I'll try and uh, stick a name up in the description somewhere. So let's get into it. When the sisters of the sacred rose march to war, they do so in a state of holy grace. Scores of sororitas advance in perfect tactical harmony, fluidly shifting with the tides of battle. Squads unleash the firepower of the Holy Trinity with the measured discipline. As they do so, they lift their voices, singing lifting hymns in praise of the Emperor. Where the foe shows strength, the sororitas stand firm, locking ranks against the assaults and cutting down onrushing attackers with deliberate and devastating salvos. Yet it is in their seamless pairing of faith with physical prowess that makes them a truly indomitable force. Miraculous bursts of speed are factored into redeployment manoeuvres, whilst the spontaneous combustion of nearby foes is relied upon as much as chainsword or bolt pistol. Assured of the Emperor's providence, the Sisters of the Sacred Rose maintain their serenity as they slaughter all before them. The Order of the Sacred Rose are often accompanied to war by a number of church followers. The priests and their fanatical conclaves flock to the sisters, eager to witness the miracles that will unfold. As such, even small missions are rarely short of soldiers. The core strength of the sororitas may be found in the supporters of the imperial cult, their prayers and cries of penance intermingling with the battle hymn of the Sacred Rose. Canonesses of the Order welcome these faithful auxiliaries and teach the sisters in their charge that the Emperor has the power to act through the least of his servants. Saint Arabella herself, the founding sister of the Order, was known to gather the unwashed rabble to her banner in times of battle. It is said that the power of her conviction transformed them into armies of indomitable warriors. Well, they love using that word indomitable, don't they? So, as you can see, I've now got the white down, which is nice to have in place. And I'm working my way around the model with our red, which is the Slaughter Red by the Army Painter. Now, in artwork I've seen, some have them in black robes with red interior. Others, like my favourite piece of artwork, which hopefully will pop up now, has it as all red. So I'm going with all red for this model because I think it just pops a lot more. So while I'm doing that, we'll carry on with the the lore. Order's belief. Many, oh, not many, I can't read, more so than any other order, the Sacred Rose avow that they are not only devout servants of the God Emperor, but they are conduits of his divine will. Through them is his glory made manifest in the galaxy, for their words and actions are guided by his wisdom. The order teaches that victory comes from faith and faith alone. If a warrior has enough faith, she can command the stars to consume her enemies and the emperor will make it so. The sisters act on this belief in every battle, war and crusade they wage, trusting that the triumph of slaughter will be preordained. Even when one of their number falls, they know that this too is part of the emperor's grand plan. A single martyr can spark a fire in a thousand souls, giving rise to an inferno of faith that can never be extinguished. These beliefs give the sisters of the sacred rose the air of devout serenity that approaches that held by their matriarch, Arabella. She was renowned for her calm nature in the face of horror and was known among Elisa Dominica's guard as being the most even-tempered. 
It is widely told that Arabella was instrumental in negotiations between Domica and the custodian who led the matriarchs before the Golden Throne. Arabella con- sub- uh, subsequently earned the honorific liberator, for she sought to break the shackles of fear and doubt that bound the faithful and strove to free humanity from the evils of the faithless. Though a formidable combatant, her true strength sprang from the abundance of miracles that are said to happen in her presence. There are stories of heretics imploding into lumps of smouldering flesh as her gaze fell upon them. Crushed by the weight of their own wickedness or having their eyes melt from their face as they beheld her glory. Jesus Christ, she sounds like she was a psyker. Uh, Yeah, so that's pretty much the order. It was summed up quite nicely. I believe we've now moved into the dark wood section, which is quite easily the pouches on the back of the model. So yeah, what a crazy ass order. They're as old as the, um, I've forgotten what they're called. What were they called? They're as old as, I got it in my notes here somewhere. Why can I now not find it? So they're as old as the Bloody Rose which was one of my other favourite outfits to paint with the all-red armour. They are as infamous as you can get with the Sisters of Battle. And as you can see, the model is 90% done, I would say. Really not much to do on a sister. Once the armour and the robes are painted, you're pretty much there. So you're getting a rough idea what this is looking like. This in total took me 20 minutes because I had to do some cleanup on the face mask and on one of the legs. But while I grab it on, we'll use the runic grey to do all the metallics. Now, as I mentioned while we were painting the red, they are shown with more black on the model. I just didn't fancy it, to be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of the black speed paints I have. So I needed the gloves in black, which we'll see in a little bit, and decided to go a bit more red on everything. I may change my mind at a later date, but technically they should have white armour with contrasting black vestments, and the linings of their cloaks are red along with their weapons, which obviously I did do on this model. And then their army badge is a white rose. Very simple, very tasteful. I quite liked painting this model. Would I want to do an army of them? No. (laughs) White is a paint to paint. There's no denying it. It's the same as the Space Marines that I've done that are white. They look great. They're fun to paint in the moment. I had a lot of fun painting this model. But if I had to paint 50 to 100 of these, I would go crazy. You make one little slip up, you have to clean the entire model. Like I messed up the face shield a little bit, the eyes bled ever so slightly. And also on the thigh, the paint bled ever so slightly. Right, unfortunately at that point, my camera decided it didn't want to focus anymore. So you missed out on me doing the sand golem on the little parchment papers that dangling off her purity seals. Now the annoying thing with white armor, going back to that discussion, is when you make a mistake, I made a slight mistake on the helmet and on the thigh. And in order to fix that, I had to completely reapply the white undercoat, then reapply the wash. And it ultimately doesn't look the same as the rest of the model. It really bothers me. So there is no hope in hell that I could ever paint a hundred of these. I think it would honestly drive me crazy and really not in a good way. It's fun to paint one. Same with the Star Phantom Space Marines. Paint one, great fun. Paint multiple of them though. I think I would absolutely lose it. I would completely lose the plot. Then as you can see on the video, we are into the glamour shots. All I had left to do was some black lining, which I just did the gloves as I mentioned earlier. The piping on the neck and her shoulder pads. It's a very quick model. All in all, I spent maybe 20 minutes with dry time and obviously fixing some white areas on the model. I very much enjoyed painting this, but yeah, I couldn't do an army. It would would be too much for me. Too much. If you've got any suggestions for 40k forces you want to see me painting on the channel, be sure to drop me a comment below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Join me over on Discord. 
and I will see you again in another video very soon. As always, I really appreciate you watching. Buh boy.